This is the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. From 98.1 CHFI Studios in Toronto, Canada. Hey Toronto, this is Ed Sheeran. This is Kelly Clarkson. Hi, this is Brian Adams. This is Adele. This is Madonna. It's Michael Bublé. And you're listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep Show. It's fun. They're amazing. All right, it's graduation season. It's very exciting. It's also nerve-wracking. Uh, it means you got to enter the real world, and that can come with applying for internships, applying for jobs, yeah. which is often followed by crickets. You apply for it's like a numbers game. You apply for a bunch of stuff, and you just cross your fingers, and you hope to hear back. I have a lot of like little cousins that are going through this right now, and Same. it's tough. Yeah, my nieces and nephews are, are finding it tough to find a job, but they're all in that area of going to interviews and. Like just hearing their stories of things that happen in those interviews and whether or not they got the job is so different mm-hmm. than when we first got our jobs. Sometimes you gotta get a little bit generous, a little <laughs> flowery, if you will, when it comes to your resume. Mm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. You know, it's like it's also like the, your choice of words when you describe like things that you've done. You know, you've you managed, you oversaw mm-hmm. when really you just like you were one of many team members. Yeah. It's euphemism central. Yes. I think after I worked at uh, Music World as like just a guy on the floor, I think I called myself the musicologist at Music World because <laughs> I got to decide occasionally what's, I'm like, yeah, let's put on Red Hot Chili Peppers. Now I'm a musicologist. Uh, are you sure. Yeah. Why not? I mean, it's, uh, you're stretching the truth a little bit. Uh, Boss Man Blair, you've done this. <laughs> I did. Uh, but it, it it may have come back to bite you. Well, this was in Montreal, and my brother did some modeling when uh, when he was younger as well, and he said, you should do it as well, and I went, eh. He said, you should. So anyway, <laughs> I put my resume in, and uh, and I knew that they needed Wait, sorry, somebody you who, have to put in a resume, a resume to, be, for modeling? to be a model? Isn't, it, isn't that just called a headshot? Well, you give it to an agent, and they send it to off to the person, and they okay. ask. Does your, does your resume just say very sexy? <laughs> it did say very sexy. <laughs> it's Thank just you. a picture of him like doing that like blue steel <laughs> pose. I can do it. So, I got Go to the interview uh, at Joseph Ribkoff. They were, uh, they were. Oh yes, Canadian yeah, brand. I, yes. Yeah, no, so they said, uh, "Can you ride a horse?" And I'm like, "I guess it's part of the job." I said, "Of course." I've been on a pony at that point. You know, the ones that are that are attached to the metal that go around oh in a circle. I said, "Oh, of course, yes." Okay, do you have a cowboy hat? I said, "I I can get a cowboy hat." All right, this is what we need you to do. You need to go up to the north of uh, Montreal the, in the Laurentians. Go to this ranch. These two women were wearing fur coats. And so the director said, all right, what we need you to do is bring the horse around and have it stop, pull its head back and between the two models for the shot. I went, huh. <laughs> so you actually had to ride a horse after you so lied like, that you could. Giddy up, giddy up. And the thing goes around and... I don't know. I think the horse heard the uh, the uh, the directive and was like, I got this. I got you. So we go around and the horse does its thing. And I'm like, this is awesome. And he goes, okay, uh, almost there. Do it again. I'm like, I don't want to do it again. So we go around and the horse does the thing. And then it does the up on its, you know, its like hind a- legs. Oh. And it does the, <laughs> great, we got the shot. So, that's, so it worked out. Oh, oh it my worked gosh. out. So, but I thought that, you know, given the fact that you don't, you couldn't actually ride a horse, that this would actually be difficult for you. You got it on the on the first I can't try. ride a horse. I still can't ride a horse. <laughs> for whatever reason, the horse did its part. Cooperated. But oh I lied God. on the resume and I said, yeah, mm. horses. I love horses. Okay, so my takeaway from this is then, like, lying always ends up working out in life. I don't know. Let's see the shot. <laughs> Let's we gotta see the find final this. Shot. Jo- if anyone has this Joseph Ribkoff app, please send it to us. This is the Pooja and Gurdjieff podcast. You know, every now and then you come across a headline that just sort of stops you in your tracks and you do a double take. This was one of them. There's a recent survey that says a quarter of Gen Zers have never answered the phone. Come on. Never. Like, don't even know what it's like I find to that, answer a phone. I find that really hard to understand and believe. Just remind me again, Gen Zers, what age are we talking about approximately here? So they're, they're 27... Uh, and under, like, 18 to 27, I would That's say. That's wild. A quarter. So you're, like, one in four people of that age in their, like, early to mid-20s and, like, late teens have never answered a phone. It's like their mom or dad calling them on the cell phone. They're like, I can't answer this. Yes, and it's not even like, oh, okay, this is just my preference. I prefer to text. I don't like phone calls. They haven't even made phone calls. Like, they just have never answered so, a phone, and they don't make phone calls. They don't talk on the phone. So a phone is strictly for texting and DMing and all the other stuff you do on it. Yes, and according to the survey, the number one reason for this is that there's too much pressure with a lot of people assuming that that call is going to be bad news. 
Or like you don't know what someone's going to ask you. Yes, and not being ready. So, n- listen, I don't want to be old judgy guy, but if, but if it's it. too much pressure, but, but I'm about to. <laughs> too much pressure to answer a phone call, you're going to do well in life. That's yeah. going to be a struggle. Like if a phone call is a pro- is problematic in terms of pressure, the real world, that's going to suck for you. Now, they did say like, look, if there was, if it was prearranged, if I knew the call was coming, I knew who was calling, I knew what it was going to be about. I if knew all they, those they were- sent me all their questions in advance. <laughs> <laughs> then it would be okay. They uh, gave me small talk to fill for banter. Yeah. Hold on. You feel like you're kind of describing yourself. A little bit. Just a little bit. Look, are you, are again, you low-key Gen Z? It's a preference for uh, me to text over talk on the phone, but it doesn't mean I don't know how. Yeah, this is true. Or haven't done it. This stat also blew my mind because the younger generation is largely texting and not getting on the phone. Uh, in the UK, between 2012 and 2022, there were 1.3 trillion online messages sent, and 36 billion text messages sent. This is just in the UK. Wow. Wow. Okay. People are not talking on the phone. I think, you know, I understand it for convenience, busy lives. You know, sometimes sometimes this happens, right? You know, mom's calling, you know, it's going to be a long conversation and you love mom, but you're in the middle of something. Sure. I'll flush the odd call. Yeah, that I understand. But Actually saying, like, no, I'm not even, I just don't pick up the phone. Even if it's mom, text me. Yeah, and as we figured out in our nearly impossible question, like an unknown caller, absolutely. You don't want to pick that up. Most More than 90% of us don't pick up unknown callers. Mm-hmm. But when you know, you know it's Poojie guy calling you. <laughs> All right, I might flush that one. Yeah, I figured. Whoa! The Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. The Pooja Ingerdeep Podcast. From 98.1 CHFI. Yo, you got a problem. Pooja Anchor Deep will solve it. Advice, advice, baby. That's right. It's free Free advice. advice. That's the disclaimer. We're not saying it's good. We're not saying uh, you're contractually obligated to take any of this. It's free. Uh, So this is a segment where you write us in with your problems. And we try to help you. We are not licensed therapists. In fact, we're probably not even that good of people. But um, <laughs> we're going to tell you what we think you should do with this scenario. Okay, here it is. Dear PNG, I was cleaning and I found a ring box, something in my boyfriend's drawer. I think he's planning on proposing with it. I love him and I'd say yes, but the ring is really ugly. Oh, oh dear. I know this sounds horrible on my part, but I really want to love this ring How do I respectfully tell him to get me a different one? Oh, no. Wow. I'm so uncomfortable. (laughs) I wonder how long they've been together. Not that that matters, I guess, but... Like, obviously, there is a proposal coming, right? Because, like, she saw this ring thinking he's going to be using it Here's a question, though. What if, like, is is she being presumptuous? What if, how does she know this is an engagement? How can one tell the difference between an engagement ring and, like, what if her birthday or something's coming up and it's just like an I love you ring? Mm, Usually an engagement ring has diamonds. And I I love you ring has what? I mean, I don't know Cubic people. Zirconia? I don't think you just give out "I love you" rings. Don't people do that? Have you ever done that? Well, no, but I don't <laughs> love anyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't usually have. Rings are usually reserved for, you know, something significant, right? Okay. Or like a milestone. Maybe after ten years together, you you do another ring or like. Right, and yeah. if, you're, if after ten years you haven't proposed yet, it's yeah. probably time to yeah to cut bait. Okay, all right. What do you think? Pooch? Okay, so uh, look, I I am sympathetic to the whole idea of listen. It's not about the ring, obviously not. It's about your love and the union between you. The the ring shouldn't matter. I love <laughs> I love to get behind that. Here's the thing. You know me. I'm not a jewelry person. I don't care about diamonds. It's not my thing. I don't ever wear any jewelry. But if I have to wear a piece of jewelry every day on my hand. I do have to love it. I do. I have to look at it every day. So I understand that from that perspective, you want to like your ring. Right. So I'm I'm sympathetic in that way. I think there is a way that you let him just propose the way he had planned on proposing with that ring. And you say yes and you have the big happy moment and you say, because you don't know, like, what if this ring's like a family heirloom or something and it has some meaning? I really want to see a picture of it. I want to see what's an, what an ugly I, ring looks like. Yeah. Well, you don't, and you don't mm. want to offend, but I think maybe that's the time after all of that has sort of like, you know, settled. Okay. Then you say, hey, you know, um, thank you. Uh, this is, this means a lot to me. But what I would love to do is maybe look at a different setting, like maybe use this diamond so and look at a different setting. Honesty is the best policy is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go the opposite way on this. Oh, big surprise. Yeah. I'm <laughs> <laughs> say, uh, now, I haven't purchased many rings, but I'm fairly certain that there is an insurance policy on rings. 
you buy this in case you lose the ring or the person says no or you have to return it or there is insurance. You can think you mm-hmm. can insure it against your house even. I think she should take this ring, make sure this it's insured somehow, and then take the ring and just Tom Brady that thing across the street. <laughs> no. Like just heave no. it into Lake Ontario. That's not your advice. And then he's it'll be lost and then don't say anything. And then he's going to realize like it's misplaced. <laughs> he's going to go back to the store, use the insurance, and then hopefully he'll just get a different oh, ring. Oh my goodness. And then you'll conveniently be there to pick it out with him? Yeah, well, we got to figure out that part still, but <laughs> Lake Ontario. Wow, nobody's going to ask us for advice on a go forward <laughs> just based on what you just said. You know that, right? From CHFI Studios, it's the Pooja Ingradeep Podcast. The nearly impossible question. With Pooja and Gurdip. Okay, here's your question. The average Canadian does this eight times a year, and we gave a bit of a clue. Yeah, we said this is timely. This week, it's timely, so mm-hmm. that should help a little bit. Okay, uh, let's get it started. Dave and Coburg, what do you think it is? Uh, go to the doctors. Go to the doctors. Oh. That's a good guess. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily timely to this week, though. Mm. Oh, nurses, I thought, maybe. Oh, nurses week. Okay. Oh, I see the I connection. see what you did there. Okay, good yeah. guess, but that's not it, Dave. I'll keep trying. Andre from Mississauga, do you have a guess? Yes, I'm going to guess mow the lawn. Mow the oh. lawn. And that would be timely to this week, what, just because sort of uh, weather's getting nice? Yeah, all the grass is growing. Mm, okay. Eight times a year, I guess over the, the season. Yeah, that makes sense. Not the answer we're looking for, though, Andre. Oh, okay, thanks, guys. Let's go to Mississauga. Janelle, the average Canadian does this eight times a year. What is it? I would say mow the lawn or gardening. Mm. Popular guess, but it's not the one we're looking for. Okay, thank you. Hey, Joanne from Toronto. Good morning. What's your guess? Morning. Um, by a greeting card. By a greeting card. Oh. Oh, and that would be um, timely to this week because of? Mother's Day. Ah, okay. Ooh. I'll tell you what. You've got the right timely, <laughs> but the wrong answer. Mm. Mm. Okay. Great, thank you. Mike from Toronto, what's your guess? How about flowers? Not flowers. No, you've got the right occasion in terms of the timeliness, but the wrong answer. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, there we go. So it's getting closer to the answer. It's Mother's Day on Sunday, so it's timely. The average Canadian does this eight times a year. I think eight would be about accurate for me. You think so? Uh, Yeah, I'd have to check my phone to confirm. Oh, another hint? Ooh. Very generous. See, I just slipped it in organically. I didn't even say I'm giving you a hint. Mm. Mm. I pointed it out <laughs> by so, saying another hint. Uh, one of us is supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> Super <laughs> obvious. It's a Monday. I got to be obvious about it. Okay. So just if you're keeping track, the average Canadian does this eight times a year. We said it's timely. We now know that timely is Mother's Day. I asked if it's true for you, Gertie. You're saying you have to I check I think it's phone. true, but I'd have to check my phone to confirm. Oh. Uh, okay, lots of things happening there. Maybe we've said too much. Uh, Gary from Oxbridge, what do you think it is? <laughs> Celebrate a special occasion like a birthday or an anniversary or Thanksgiving. Okay, good guess. That's not the right not answer, it? though. Oh, okay, well, there we go. Have a good day. <laughs> you too, Gary. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> Bob from Trenton, what's your guess? How about actually physically call your mother. I love that guess. Mm. Hopefully, I mean, eight times a year. Just depends yeah, on the see relationship. Them more, but maybe you'd call them only eight times. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a good mm. guess, Bob, but that's not the right answer. All right. Thank you. I tell you right now, my son Bodie, who's two, he better call me more than eight times a year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking every day. Is that weird? Is that we'll too much? Teach him how to use the cell phone. Yeah, that's uh, he'll get. He'll be calling you every day. Uh, how about this for another hint? Um, it is something you have to do physically in person. You have to be physically in person with your mom to do this. Ah. You do it. Eight, you would average Canadian does it eight times a year. So you have to check your phone, but you have to be in person. Well, I'd have to check my phone to verify that my number was eight. You got to be in person to do it. Oh my! It's timely for Mother's Day. I think this is the most hints we've ever given out, <laughs> and we still may not get it. Let's go to Miles in Hamilton. What's your guess? Uh, take a picture. You, you got, got it! it! It's take a picture with not this time ever. <laughs> First time, eh? Yes. How did you know First that was the answer? The last one. Check your phone. How many pictures you get? How many times you got to take a picture? Mm. Okay, we gave enough, like, like you know, <laughs> B plus hints that you figured this out. So, we love it. Miles, is it true for you that you've taken about eight photos with your mom in a year? Uh, I've taken a lot more than that, but yeah. Nice. Okay, you're bringing the Canadian average up. We love to see it. Miles, thanks for playing, man. All the best. The average Canadian takes eight pictures a year with their mom. Yeah. Is that true for you? Did you check? I, th- I didn't check. I mean, I have to go through the whole year. I feel year, like but you I got more with your mom. I think, yeah, because we went on vacation together, so I think we got more. Mm-hmm. Probably got eight that week alone. <laughs> Hit my quota. I'm out. You're a good son. 
Thanks for listening to the Pooja and Gurdeep podcast. Listen to Pooja and Gurdeep live weekday mornings from 5 to 9. Only on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's perfect music mix.